Hi everyone, I'm glad you're here. Hope you enjoyed your Thanksgiving holiday. Me and my family, we had a good time and after we ate dinner, we played a, a game, it's a board game called Smart Ass. Whoever got the most answers right ended up being the winner of the game. Two years in a row, my son has won the game. But early this morning, about 12, 16 a.m., there was a magnitude 3.1 earthquake north of Portland. This very well could be an extension of the Portland Hills Fault, which is capable of having a magnitude 6.5 or greater. And it's been between at least five, maybe 10,000 years since this fault has ruptured. This fault zone is only about 1,300 uh, feet deep and it runs all the way down here through Portland. There's probably all kinds of other fault lines, but um, the city has been built on top of them, so it's hard to track. But um, the Portland Hills Fault follows right underneath um, Highway 30 here. And you can see it goes all the way down here. Only recently have they been investigating. Let me turn this off about faults that they didn't know about. Example, Mount Hood. That's capable of having a magnitude 7.5 or greater. I drew it out, but there's all kinds of little offshoots to uh, Mount Hood's fault zone. Interestingly, uh, we're going through the effects of a solar flare during this time of an earthquake. Any fault that is ready to rupture uh, could be affected by that. Um, it occurred at 816 Universal Time. And here you can see the planetary index, um, how high it was, up to 5. And yeah, it occurred during this time that we were being impacted um, by uh, a solar flare from the sun. In my last report that I posted today, yeah, we got more solar flares that are going to be coming in and impacting our Earth. Probably late tomorrow, the uh, 25th into the 26th. So seeing how it's been so long since this fault has ruptured, uh, they figure between five to 10,000 years. Yeah, it could very well have a lot of energy stored up and it would be devastating if it did rip all the way down here to the city of Portland. USGS gave it an intensity level of five, which means it was felt by most people. There might have been some breakage of dishes, maybe windows, cracks in your walls, disturbance of tall objects knocked over. Did you have any damage? I like it when people send in reports to EMSC, and there was three reports sent in. Uh, the first one from Woodland, which is 11 kilometers east. So that is about six, almost seven miles to the east. They said it felt like someone hit the side of their house. Another one said it shook the entire house. No damage was noticed. And then another one from La Center said they weren't sure if they were going crazy. It sounded like a branch hit the roof. All these reports came from the east. And here on the uh, Did You Feel It website for the uh, people that sent in reports, yeah, most of them came from the east. Over here, we got an intensity level four. They don't give a name of location. Another one, intensity level four. There, um, where the earthquake supposedly occurred, intensity level three. Looks like it was felt the farthest to the east by Grisham and to the west. Doesn't give a location. Let me zoom in if I can see. Oh, Tillamook. Okay, and then up here along the Columbia River. Let's see, near Astoria. Not quite as far as Astoria. Let's see. Um, Wallace Island close to, it looks like. Now that was intensity level two. Well, the felt reports is now up to 181 people. Did you feel this earthquake? They do not have a moment tensor ball. Here on the USGS quarterly map, uh, they got one fault drawn out here, uh, Lacamas Lake Fault. They don't have a lot drawn out. Yeah, 
they do have um, the Mount Hood faults drawn out, added to the maps here. Yeah, like I said, they built the city up over the fault, so they really don't know um, by looking at the surface of the earth just how far this fault zone extends. Here we got long view, that's in yellow, but they don't have posted what it means to be in yellow. USGS does have a scenario for a magnitude 7.1 earthquake there on the Portland Hills Fault. Intensity level 9. Yeah, there would be a lot of death and destruction. Here it says buildings would shift off their foundations, cracked, thrown out of plumb. The ground would open up, crack. Underground pipes would break. Yeah, that includes gas and water lines. I hope you got a wrench to uh, turn those out off. Yeah, you don't want fires or flooding. I don't know if they got the uh, Portland Hill faults divided up into three different sections. Here you can see they got three different areas drawn out in red. And yeah, damage would be felt over a very wide area. Let's see, looking at it here, all the way up to Astoria and beyond. Yeah. Again, this is just a scenario. Um, Olympus, or Olympia, I should say, excuse me. Yeah, going all the way up into the state of Washington. Can you see those lighter color greens? And then off to the east, uh, Yakima Valley, um, the Dolls. Let's see here. All the way down south. They're saying that the destruction would be more from this than, say, an earthquake um, from the Cascadia subduction zone. I don't know. That's just what they're saying. Yeah, USGS doesn't emphasize the threat of this fault zone. You know, they just put 3.1 Washington, Oregon border region. Really downplaying it. I think a lot of people probably worry more about the volcanoes erupting or maybe the Cascadia fault zone and don't even consider, um, you know, the different faults that run underneath our major cities. Yeah, so be prepared. Like I said, we're going to get hit with more CMEs from the sun um, late tomorrow and going into the uh, 26th. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're not subscribed. Please stay safe, and I will talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.